This is a presentation of the theoretical pearl. Leibniz equality is isomorphic to Merten-Luth identity, parametrically, by Abel, Cockix, De Vries, Tamani, and Wadler. I'm Philip Wadler. The paper was first published in Journal of Functional Programming, Volume 30, number E17, in 2020. I'm very pleased to be able to present it at ICFP this year. I think it's a great innovation that uh, many conferences are bringing in, that uh, papers published in other journals can also be published at the conference. So this paper is a story about two equalities, Leibniz equality, which we're going to write as an equal sign with a dot over it, and Merten-Leuf identity, which we're going to write as three parallel bars. And it's well known that each of these implies the other. It's well known that that's a retraction, but what's less well known is that that's actually an isomorphism. To prove it's an isomorphism, we're not going to need to assume parametricity, uh, what I've called elsewhere theorems for free. So from that free theorem, we will get that these are isomorphic. I think that's well known as a folk theorem, but this seems to be the first time it's been published in the literature. It's not a deep result, but it's a fun result and a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about these two different forms of equality. Now, if we go back to that paper for a moment, it's actually written as a literate Agda script. And so that means all of the Agda in it, like here's the main result, you can see it's typed up very neatly in color. But if we go to the source of this, you'll see that's all the, that all that um, code has been typeset between begin code and end code. And what that means is if I type control C, control L, Agda executes it. So you can see it's turned into color. You can see there's a wee window at the bottom with no error message in it. So that means it's type checked correctly. So we're guaranteed that all the code that we publish is absolutely correct. So that's a fantastic trick. And uh, I encourage everybody to follow it. Let me give you just one other example. Here's a textbook that I'm a co-author of, Programming Language Foundations in Aga. This is published in GitHub on the web because the whole textbook is actually a literate Agda program, so you can execute it. Now, publishing on GitHub is great because it means when your readers find typos or other errors in your book, they can submit a pull request and fix that typo for you. And from this, I know that there are an embarrassing number of typos in this book. But I know one bit that has no typos in it, which is the bit that appears between begin code and end code, because that's executed Agda. I know it's type checked. I know there are no typos or other kinds of errors in it. So this is a great way of um, ensuring that we do what we are supposed to do and publish the truth. So that's literate programming in Agda. What this means is if you have a LAGDA extension on your file, Agda will convert that to tech. If you have lagda.md, Agda will convert that to .md, which is markdown, which is how the textbook PLFA was done. Now, when you do literate Agda, I strongly encourage you to publish everything. So in this paper, we've published everything, even this little pragma at the beginning, which is a technical point which says that we're not using uniqueness of identity proofs, and which means that everything that's done here is compatible with homotopy type theory, where you might have more than one proof that two things are equal. So I really encourage putting absolutely all the code uh, in your published paper, because that avoids another kind of error, because it means your published paper can be read by Agda. And that means there's enough information there to explain it to Agda. And that means there must be enough information there to explain it to your reader. There are a number of times I've written, read other papers uh, written in literate Agda 
The authors of these papers were thinking, right, I will just hide some details to make things easier for the reader. But in my case, at least, it didn't make things easier. I couldn't follow what was going on until, fortunately, they'd also linked to the actual AGDA code. I could read that and discover what's going on. But if you just print the actual AGDA code in your paper, again, that's an error that can't occur. So I encourage uh, people to consider printing just print literate AGDA and all of the literate AGDA. It's a great way to go. So let's actually look at Leibniz equality. So here's the definition. So this says, let big A be a type. Type is written S-E-T in AGDA. And let little a and little b be values of type A. And then we're going to return another type. This type contains set, so it has to be in set one. And how is this defined? So um, we have an implicit parameter A here. That means we don't need to write it explicitly. AGDA will infer that for us. And we give A and B the two values that are equal. And then which type is it? The one that for every P, where P is a predicate over A. So that means it's a function from A to a type. And then uh, a value here of P of A will be a value of that type. So evidence that the property P of A holds. And given that, we return P of B evidence that the property B holds. So this is Leibniz equality. When are two things equal? They are equal if every property of one is also a property of the other. If you're a Star Trek fan, Mr. Spock expressed this by saying, a difference that makes no difference is no difference. So you'll notice that this seems quite asymmetric, right? We've got P of A implies P of B. But in fact, this is such a powerful notion that it is symmetric, and we'll see that in a moment. So first of all, right, we want to be reflexive. We want to always be the case that A is equal to A. What does that mean? Given an arbitrary P and proof that P of A holds, we need to return proof that P of A holds. OK, that's very easy. It's also transitive. So given, oh, now notice here, A equals B with spaces is the predicate, A is equal to B. And then by convention in AGDA, we just write the same thing without spaces. This is type set all in black. It's just a variable name. So it's a lot like Lisp. Spaces are very significant, and you can actually have symbols in the middle of names. So A equals B here is just a variable name. But its type, in fact, is this one, A equals B. So this is evidence that A equals B. This is evidence that B equals C. And now we need to return evidence that A is equal to C. What does that consist of? Well, it says, give me an arbitrary predicate P, give me evidence that P of A holds, and now I need to return evidence that P of C holds. So how do we get that? Well, A equal B applied to P and P of A gives us evidence that P of B holds, and then B equals C applied to P, and evidence of P of B gives us evidence of P of C. So function composition gives us transitivity. Now, the fun one is symmetry. So now, given evidence that A equals B, we want to return evidence that B equals A. So we've got evidence that A equals P. We take our arbitrary predicate P. And now we need to return a function that given evidence of P of A returns evidence of P of B. So that's what Q B is going to be. So we're going to find a new predicate Q in terms of P. So Q of C holds if P of C implies P of A. And obviously, Q of A holds, right? Because that says P of A implies P of A. So that's just the identity function like before. But now, right, we can take not just any predicate P, but you know any arbitrary predicate. So we can use Q, which depends on P. And then A equal B, given predicate Q and Q of A, evidence that Q of A holds, returns something of type Q of B, evidence that Q of B holds. But Q of B is just P of B implies P of A, which is, whoops, sorry, exactly what we wanted to show. Therefore, Leibniz equality is also symmetric, one of my favorite proofs. So Mertenloff identity is defined uh, in this way. Uh, the type A equals A is inhabited by reflexivity. And we can pattern match on that, so it's very easy to show symmetry, because when we pattern match on reflexivity, then it knows the only way that A equals B can hold 
since it's reflexive, is if B is in fact A. So this becomes A equals A, and now we've got A equals A implies A equals A, which is, again, A equals A is proved by reflexivity. Similarly, for transitivity. So that's all very straightforward with merit and love identity. Uh, we'll need one other thing, which is extensionality, which just says if for all A, F of A is equal to G of A, then um, the two functions F and G must be equal, and we'll just postulate that because it's not built in to Agda. So now we actually get the equivalence. We can show that A equals B in Mettenloff implies A equals B Leibniz, and that's easy. So A equals B, we pattern match against Reffel. Now we need evidence for A equals A, and that's easy, because given P and P of A, we just return P of A. The other way around, we've got Leibniz and we need to show Merton-Luff. It's very similar to the proof of symmetry, but now instead of taking Q of C to be um, P of C implies P of A, we're going to take it to be A is equivalent to C. Okay, and then obviously Q of A holds by reflexivity. And then again, right, uh, A equals B on Q and Q of A transposes that to give us a proof of Q of B, which is A is equivalent to B, which is what we wanted to show. So very similar proof. Uh, left inverse just follows immediately by simplification. Very easy. To show right inverse, we need parametricity. So here's the theorem for free that corresponds to the type of Leibniz equality. So our for all p now becomes for all p and all p prime, and all relations are that for an arbitrary c of type a um, gives evidence that p of c and p prime of c are related. And then similarly for the rest, I won't go through that in detail. You can find the technical details in the paper. And then finally we get the proof of right inverse. Again, I'm not going to go through that in detail but uses parametricity. It uses exactly the same Q of C that we used um, to prove to show that J exists and a suitably defined relation. I'll leave the details of that for later. And then by applying extensionality, we actually get that it's an actual inverse here uh, because before we just showed this uh, when applied to arbitrary P and P of A, but here we can show it uh, via extensionality. And that's it. If we go back, to the code, you can see that this has all been written again as literate agda, and indeed that main result is true. Thank you for your time.